Hi, in this particular tutorial we're going to talk about managing data connections and how to create connections to data. One of the big challenges that we have is that when we get in more advanced analysis we might have data sitting in different sources. This tutorial is going to talk about how to do that. In many of my intro and middle level GIS classes you'll see I store everything as an MXD. So if I go to File, Geography 4010, Exercise 7, I might just give you an MXD where I've created the sources and the symbology for all the particular data that we're looking at here. You can see what this looks like. I have some crime data right here in my table of contents. I'll click OK here. I have some crime data here in my table of contents. I have roads. I have some GOQ imagery. I have some DRG imagery right here. And basically what I've done is created an MXD which essentially serves as a container for the symbology of my crimes my roads, I might have colleges out here if I zoom out a little further where we look at Duke or Durham Tech or whatever and then my DOQ imagery and these data are sitting in their own location perhaps in the same database or perhaps in separate databases. In my classes, especially my more advanced classes, I'm going to ask you to get data from different places. So if it's sitting on our flash drive or sitting on our C drive or sitting on our desktop, we're going to need to be able to connect to those. Source of frustration has been in classes when I ask you to add two layers, well, how do we find them? Where are they? Where did I put those? Like I've said before, computers are stupid. They're going to do whatever you tell them to. So we're going to talk about how to do this in this class. If you take in my Geography 3435 class or Geography 2020, literally in Exercise 1, it talks about those. In the tutorials, it's necessary that in order for you to answer the questions, you need to connect to the data. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay. Up in the top right here, I see folder connections right here. Okay, You notice that I have absolutely no folder connections. So I can find where it is. If I know where the data are, I can create a folder connection. The one challenge in working with databases is that you need to create a database connection to it here. You just can't open up the data. You can see in a couple examples that I have right here. I've plugged in my C drive. Okay, I have my C drive. I've plugged in a flash drive right here. I have something here called data. These are high schools. Okay, this is a shape file. If I open this up in my ArcGIS, it's not going to look like this. If I open it up in my Windows Explorer here, you can see it looks like this. I've also looked at the project data. Okay? This is that project folder that we have in our raster GIS class, and I think we'll have some in our vector GIS class. You can see what these data look like here. This folder here is project data. If I double click on this, you're going to see all of this junk here. I have no idea what this junk is. But when I open it up in ArcGIS, it's going to be, it, it will be understood if I create the adequate network connection and database connection to it. Okay. So in some cases, I've stored it on my D drive. In some cases, I might have stored it on my desktop. In other cases, I've stored it on my C drive. It's necessary that you tell the computer where you've stored it. We run into some problems if we store it on something like Google Drive. If stored on Google Drive, I don't know. I don't have a URL or database connection to connect to that. These days, you can see here on GIS servers, I connect. I can connect to ArcGIS servers, North Carolina One Map servers. Okay, I'm, I've created my own service that allows me to do that too. Okay, something from the Department of Cultural Resources right here. I've created services that are connected far away, okay, over in Raleigh or whatever, or, or at the uh, Esri server. Here, we have data stored on a flash drive, on a desktop, on a C drive. It's pertinent when I say bring in a flash drive, all your data is there, you need to know where that data are. So right here under folder connections, I need to create a folder connection. There's a couple different ways to do this. I have this black plus sign with the connect to folder, or I can just right mouse click and say connect to folder. There's a couple ways I can do this here. Now this is just asking for the actual connection. If I drill too far into the database and I'm actually interpreting the folder to be the actual database, we're going to run into problems here. Okay. The first example that I'm going to look at is my D drive right here. Okay. I have my D drive right, right here. My folder could be D. It could be D data. It could be whatever I want it to be. So if I go more and more levels in, that means that I might have to create multiple connections where that if I have a the D drive right here, and I expand it as a database connection. Now, if I expand my data folder, I've got high schools there. This looks a lot different than the high schools that we looked at before. 
under project. If I click on project and expand on it, you can see my project data that I have here. Okay, this is very important here, extremely important. If I right mouse click and click on a connect to database connection and I go to my D drive and my project and this project data, it's not going to know what to do because it sees this GDB here. This thinks it looks like a folder, but we know in reality this is a file geo database that we're looking at here. Okay. So if I click on my project right here, D project, I've created another database connection, which basically it doesn't require me to expand the folder here from the D drive. Me personally, I like storing everything at the root, so I don't have these multiple database connections. In order to manage these, I can right mouse click, disconnect folder, and it'll do the same exact thing. So if I have my data right here, I can expand this. These are high schools throughout the state of North Carolina. If I have my project right here, these are some of the project data that we're working with. If I expand this, I can look at elevation. Uh, some of the data that we've worked with in the past are you know, NLCD data. Okay. So these are some of my NLCD data, national land cover data set. I can expand in so I can see where it's superimposed on schools. Remember what we did before. I can double click here and I can change the symbology, change the color ramp, import a color ramp, and I can just bring it into my project. Up in the top right here, you can see this navigation. Okay. So now you can see where these high schools are in relation to land cover. Okay. Some of the other caveats that I want to mention is that if I create a folder connection and connect a folder, I might have stored it on my desktop. So you might need to navigate to your particular computer where your desktop is. So if it's on your desktop, you might need to create a connection to your desktop or your documents. If you download something from Google Drive, it probably stored in your downloads. So like I've said before, computers are stupid. They're going to do whatever you tell it to. So if you store it on the desktop or in some strange location, you're going to need to keep track of that. Okay? Or if I store it in my pictures or whatever. I'll do one more here. Okay. So I've stored everything on a C, my C drive in a folder called temp. I'm going to right mouse click or I'm going to mouse click right here. I've stored it on, I need to figure out where my C drive is. Okay, Juice Master 1 is the name of my computer. Here's my C drive. I'll expand it a little bit more in this case here. And I'm going to go down to temp. Yes, I'll go down to temp right here and I'm going to click OK. Now when I expand on my temp, I can see all the personal geo databases, file geo databases that I have here. I have, you know, QAQC project. Uh, food desert study areas, some of the things that we've been here's some schools. So these might be some of the non-public schools that I've superimposed on top of that. So now I can have my high schools here as red dots. And then I, I have a GIS data layer here that represents my non-public schools. And I'll store these as, you know, squares or something like this. Okay. So now I can create this database connection here. And I can manage this if I need to. You know, right? I can right, I can right mouse click here. I can disconnect this folder if I need to. If I have too many here. So now, next time I open up this particular computer, I can see my folder connections. If I stick in my flash drive again and it happens to call it E, well, you're just going to have to create a new database connection. The challenges that we run into with misplaced or missourced files on our MXDs are that if we pull out our flash drive and put another one back in, it's not called D, you know, it's called E. So we just would have to remap it. And that's a fairly easy process that I talk about in another tutorial. So as you can see right here, in the base for my art catalog right here, I'm able to manage connections here. You can see I've created two particular connections, one to C temp, one to my D drive. I've accessed data from three, two or three different folders right here. Some were shape files, some were rasters, some were personal geo database, um, personal geo database feature classes, and I have connections to tool toolboxes. I have database servers and GIS servers. So this is another data source that I can look at. I have another tutorial on how to connect to those because these are connected remotely. Someone provides information about a URL that you can connect to, perhaps credentials like a username and password in order for you to do that. So moving forward, if you're in my more advanced classes, if I ask you to add data from these particular files, 
or these particular folders. Make sure you know where they are on your particular computer and know how to connect to those so we can dedicate a lot more of our time and resources to doing the actual analysis than figuring out what the data is because it's going to be important that you know how to connect to those data, especially if they're in multiple data sources and multiple, uh, multiple directories, you know, flash drives. So if you can't store them all in the same place, make sure you know how to find them and manage them using these folder connections.